Hi, this is the Change and Grow Wellness Show, a show for you, the busy professional who wants to live a healthier, happier life with increased energy and productivity. And I'm Jackie Grant, and I'm your host, and we are today talking about building your confidence and being your true self after having children. We have got a special guest, and she's a human behavior specialist, a mother, a yogi, and a founder of Tara Malau. I did say it right just now, didn't I? And then I just went crazy. Um, And she has a mission to inspire females to embrace their self confidently and live their passion and fulfill their purpose. Welcome, Tara. Hi, how are you? (laughs) I'm good, I'm good. I know it's 5.30 in the morning there. So I will try to keep you awake with my questions. (laughs) (laughs) Great, Tara. (laughs) So Tara, tell us a little bit about you and, you know, why you started doing what you do. Mm, Well, uh, this is actually my third business. So I have been an entrepreneur for over a decade now. And what I really found is after I had kids, I became so lost. I became so lost. So the business, the consultancy business that I was running um, when I fell pregnant was actually in Tanzania. And when I came back to Australia here to give birth, um, I had to sort of give that up. Well, I thought I could just put it on pause. And I thought after kids, I'll just, I'll bounce back and I'll get back to it. And my my life as I knew it was going to be exactly the same. And suddenly, (laughs) suddenly I had this little baby who didn't sleep, who, you know, had all these needs that Mm. I wasn't quite expecting. Um, And I definitely wasn't expecting to be as tired as I was. (laughs) So I just suddenly felt like, wow, what, what has happened? Life, honestly, life as I knew it and who I knew myself to be and how I defined myself was suddenly no more, right? And that was sort of flipped on its head and totally shaken up. So it really took me quite a while to, I won't say bounce back, but to almost re-emerge, right? To find out who I actually was. If I wasn't all these things that I had previously identified with, if I wasn't my job, if I wasn't uh, the people I was hanging around, if I wasn't this person who lived in a certain place or who did certain things, then Mm. who was I, right? And so it really shook my confidence Um, and meeting a lot of other women as well, you know, through mother's groups or wherever, just hanging out at the park for something to do, (laughs) I realized that they felt the same way too. So I really saw a strong need for women um, and mothers in particular to find a space where not only could they openly share this fact of I've got no freaking clue what I'm doing or who I am or what I want, um, but those who sort of realized as well, wait, you know what, I'm – I'm more than just mum. Like mum is one part of me. Now what are all those other parts and how can I merge it in a way that really makes me feel whole, makes me feel connected and makes me feel like I'm living a purpose greater than myself. So, Mm. yeah, that brings us here. Brilliant. Brilliant. And it's, it's, it's so true what you say because, you know, what happens is you can also become because you're just so connected with your baby, you know, it's just you and the baby and no one else. And you're not talking to that many adults sometimes, unless you branch out and go to all these different mother's groups and stuff like that. And it can be a lonely place sometimes, you know, Um, and building that confidence up again after, after all that can be, it can be difficult because you could think, well, have I still got the skills that I had because I've been at home for the last nine months? You know, mm. all those kind of things that start coming up in in people's minds about whether they, they they can do what they were doing before because now they're a mother, you know, mm. and we, we tend to put those labels on ourselves. So yeah. what so what have you found that has been really 
useful for people in terms of them starting to build their confidence after, you know, or even actually, let's let's take it back a bit. Let's think about how they can think about what changes they can make to make them know what they what they're going to go and branch out and do because it may not be going back to that job. Yeah, absolutely. And I think a lot of women realize that it's suddenly, oh my goodness, I can't be and I don't want to be stuck in a rigid, maybe it's a nine to five or, or whatever it is, you start to realize, wait, I don't, my time is my most precious asset now because so many people demand so much of it. So to keep swapping my time for money um, on someone else's, you know, time as well that's just not doable, right? That's not doable for me. So Mm. I think it starts first off with that realization going, oh, okay, wow, that's, I'm not satisfied with that. And I could do something else. That's sort of a really big part. I've talked to a lot of women who, if they're not quite there at that stage yet, then there's no point in coming, talking to me. You know, I'm a big believer in we really have to be, um, motivated within ourselves to actually yeah. take the next step, then the next step, right? People can guide you, but if you've got someone pushing you, it's just not yeah. as meaningful. So yeah. once ladies make that realization, and what I'd say as well is more often than or not, it starts almost as like a whisper. You know, it's just this whisper or like this small little quiet feeling or little niggling, like mm. um, an itch that you can't scratch sort of thing. And you go, what is that? There's just something there. So that's what I find more often than not is how it starts, that Mm. there's something there, something's not right, something's a bit off, and and some questions start popping up in your mind going, well, is, is this it? Is this all there is? What if there's something more? What if I could be more? What if, you know, just starting to realize that, okay, Maybe, again, the the world as I know it, and I always call it the shoulds that we Mm. put on ourselves and other people, you know, you should do this, you should do that, your life should look like this, you should be Mm. like that. And so suddenly you're starting to realize maybe those shoulds are a little bit of BS, right? Mm. So it often starts off very quiet, and then from there it starts to build momentum. If we uh, allow ourselves to stop and listen, then Mm. it starts to build momentum. So once you get to that point where you think, yeah, I know things could be different. Even if you you don't know what that means, even if you don't know what that looks like, yeah. just follow that to start with. Mm. Follow that to start with. And then there's so many incredible women online. Jackie yourself is a great example that women can follow to just start seeing what else is out there. So mm. one of my um, most recent clients, she came to me going, I don't know what I want to do. And that's literally, it It wasn't necessarily like, I want my own business. She was like, I kind of just want to do my own thing so I can travel, so I can earn money. And so my daughters have a really awesome role model to look up to. And she was like, that's where I'm starting. Yeah. Yeah. So, and that's where I think a lot of us start. Like, that's what I want. Anything else Mm. is up for grabs. (laughs) And so... Really, ultimately, what it comes down to for your viewers as well, if you're at this stage, look at what skills you do have. And that is just such a big step in and of itself. Like it sounds super obvious and easy, but it's actually getting to that stage where you really value what you already know, what you already Mm -hmm. have learned from your years before being a mum. And I think that's a big shift for women to have. And even now I'm two years in on this business and even now I'm finding new levels of understanding, of valuing stuff that I already had within me, right? For a while there I was always seeking, I need another degree or I need more knowledge, yeah. here, or I need to, <laughs> you know? Like just consuming knowledge, again, not a bad thing, but it often meant that I wasn't acknowledging what I already had, right? Mm, What I already had. So, yeah, I would say first thing, look at what you've already got. Even if that means writing out a whole list of degrees, qualifications, knowledge, understanding, even, I mean, I'm talking even as simple as going, I know how to tie my shoelace. 
right? That sounds basic, but don't take anything for granted. And it's mm. often the things that we take for granted, those things that come really easy to us that yeah. we overlook, but it's mm. such a big deal to someone else. So mm. that's definitely where I say to start. Yeah, definitely. So that sounds really good, right? In a list, you know, looking at your strengths, you know, maybe even looking at what gaps you have got that like don't need to be filled because sometimes we just want to fill those gaps all the time you know what I mean and it's like we don't actually need to fill those gaps we just need to look at them and acknowledge them so yeah completely understand what you're saying you know the thing is Tara is that sometimes that it's not just after you've had the kids it's like when the kids are like maybe five or six and you're thinking that like you want to shift I mean you know I've had a few clients like that and you know they're 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 already back to work they've you know taken the time to be there and you know it's like they they may not have done that work what you're talking about at that point and now it's like I can't actually see what I want to do now or where I want to be now or what I could be doing now you know it, have you come across a few people like that yeah definitely and it happens it's always interesting I find it happens at different stages um so like I said when suddenly the kids go to school so suddenly they're becoming a bit more independent and they pull away from it so your role as, as like mom changes again right mm. from the newborn when they just need you and only you which is mm. very draining and then suddenly they start to pull back and they can get their own stuff ready and they get organized and so then that next shift happens and and yeah it's, women go oh okay well now what do I do with my time mm. <laughs> they don't need me or even again when the kids go to high school or when the kids finish school and they go to university or they leave right I even have women who are like my children have now left the home and now what <laughs> you know they've just been mum for so long and mm. I think that's where I mean at any stage right at any stage it is never too late this idea that there are age limits on things is just rubbish, right? Yeah. It's never too late to reconnect with your passion. And by the way, like your passion as well can always change and morph, right? Um, I, I follow the work of Simon Sinek. Oh, yeah. I start with mine. Yeah. 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 So because your why is, and it really is, it's always consistent. So I say your why, your passion, your purpose, the, the ultimate is always the same. It's just how you go about uh, doing that is always changing, right? And mm. it depends on what stage of life you're in, what are your circumstances. So my first business was um, as a dance teacher and I would deliver dance education and what the schools would call alternative fitness programs <laughs> in it to high schools and primary schools. And awesome. at the same time, I would run adult fitness classes. But my focus was never on actually getting fit, or losing weight, like I didn't actually give a shit. And to be honest, I attracted women who were the same. It was all about just having fun. And in those moments, especially with dance, your mind cannot be thinking about and worrying about what other people think of you because you're concentrating on the steps. Like yeah. you're, you're making sure you don't fall over or you don't yeah. run into the person next to you. And that's mm -hmm. what I love so much about it. It was like suddenly all those judgments, all those preconceived notions, people just were forced to get it out of their heads mm -hmm. and really embrace who they were at that time. So my why is, as you mentioned at the start, to inspire people to embrace themselves so they can confidently live their passion and fulfill their purpose. So that's what was happening. That was my why. That was what was fueling me in that first business. Then in my second business, I was over in Tanzania and I was a, um, a business consultant over there for not-for-profit organizations to help their international marketing and fundraising efforts and to help them structure their organizations so they weren't necessarily at the center of it. 
right? Um, so again, that same idea that they were embracing themselves and their passions and their strengths to then impart that to other people, to recruit other people to get on board their vision. Mm-hmm. So everything that I have done, um, while it may seem completely random and completely different, it's actually all fueled by the same thing. So right. it doesn't matter at what stage you're at, what you have done throughout your life leaves you clues. So that's where I always start with people. Let's look at the clues. What are those moments where you've truly felt proud, where you felt like you were in the zone, right? Where you were just living your ultimate, right? And it may seem totally random, but let's gather those little bits of evidence to really understand what is your why, what is your purpose? And then from Mm. there, we can work out where to go from here, right? And how, how can we channel that energy? Okay, that's great, Tara. So, Tara, can you tell us some little simple tips that people can take away so that they have a element of like, right, okay, let me go away. We said about the list. Yeah. We said about really thinking about um, what their true passion is. What 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 steps, you know, what other steps can they take, um, simple steps that someone could take to let them kind of have a clearer vision? Mm. So it does sometimes seem like it's all jumbled and we're a little bit wafty old pie in the sky sometimes. But with those lists, I really ask people to start off by writing three columns. So one we mentioned, write out all the skills, all the qualifications, everything that you know how to do that you're really, really certain on. You know it. So write that in one column. Then in the next column, write out, yeah, what are you passionate about? What are those subjects or those topics that you could just totally blah, 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 unscripted. You could talk to anyone about until you're blue in the face. So what are all those different topics? And then on the other side is what do you actually love to research? What do you love to to learn more about and through that you'll start to find common themes or you'll be able to group things from each of these columns and that can start getting you a little bit closer about what it is you could possibly do what could you teach where could you move on to from here right mm. because nowadays you can monetize anything mm. literally anything you can monetize <laughs> right <laughs> so Find out what is your thing? What is that thing? So again, I had a client who was like, I just, you know, she goes, I just love writing. I love being on my own and I love writing and I love traveling and I love, what else did she say? And and she has all these business qualifications. So from there, she's now started, only just, but she's started a blog, just writing about her travel adventures, writing about different businesses that are allowed for travel. Um, and is looking to connect women to um, possible business ventures. If they love traveling, here's some possible business ventures that you could go into. So that's just from cool. that, that's where she started. And mm. I, she's like, I don't know where this is going to go. And I said, neither do I. But that's the point. You've got to start, right? So write this list with these three columns and then whatever it is, just go with it. Start. Just mm. I can start it because you could sit and analyze and and talk about it, but you're never going to know what's actually going to work and what actually feels right until you do it. So Mm. that's my big recommendation for everyone to get started. Good. That's brilliant. Simple. That's something that people can take away. They can do straight away. So Tara, what if people have got like fears? I mean, everyone's got fears we've all got fears and that is the thing that hinders us to do stuff fears procrastination you know what else could i say that there, there's so many you know overwhelm things. is a big one well, for my life. You know? yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly so you know what would you say to someone that like you know even just starting that list is going to be a bit of a, a a fearful adventure you know mm-hmm. what would you say to someone then Yeah, I'd say, first of all, notice it. So procrastination is such a great one because it's so sneaky, right? Mm. We don't even realize that we're so good. Well, I'll speak for myself. 
So I'm so good at procrastinating. <laughs> <laughs> I know exactly I what you mean. So good at it. <laughs> I even put it down when I went through this process. I even put it down as a skill, like procrastination number one. I am awesome at it. So <laughs> <laughs> it just sneaks up on us. So just start by noticing. What is something that you're like, oh, I really want to? Not the things that you're like, oh, I should do because you're never going to do those. What is something that you're like, I really want to do it or that sounds interesting. Yeah, I and and you just keep putting it off. So notice what are those things that you're putting off that you mm. wouldn't actually like to do and just start thinking to yourself, well, why am I putting it off? What's stopping me from doing it right now? Or you're tackling whatever task it is five minutes today five minutes tomorrow, even set a timer for yourself to say, okay, five minutes, that's it. All of mm -hmm. this is a process and you just start chipping away at it. So mm -hmm. it's, um, what is it? Brene Brown, feel the fear and do it anyway. Right. So that all sounds very well and good, but when you're in the moment, it's almost kind of hard to take that leap or to push through it. So I say, just chip away at it. Notice it first notice the fear that's coming up notice which comes in the form of you know the the self doubts the the poor self talk the procrastination the overwhelm all of that sort of stuff all those like negative sort of feelings yeah. come up notice it first and say where's this coming from what is this am i actually is, is this afraid or a fear sorry that's coming up and more often than not it's a fear of failure that's such a big yeah. one for a lot of us so yeah. notice it first and then and just start tackling it, like I said, five minutes at a time, just chipping away a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. Because what that does is it creates your new baseline or your new norm. So if you start dipping into that fear or into that uncomfortable space, just a little bit, you hold it there and then go back to your normal world. And then a little bit more and a little bit more. You're just pushing your comfort zone, pushing the boundaries a little bit little bit at a time and you're creating that new norm for yourself and finally you'll you'll discover that whatever used to scare you you're like oh it's not actually that scary it's not mm. that unknown you know yeah. the whole world didn't collapse maybe I did <laughs> make a mistake or stuff it up but you know what no one's really watching anyway so it doesn't matter but just do a little bit at a time mm. brilliant brilliant Tara do you want to tell us this case study about someone? I know you've told us about um, one of your clients, but a client that actually you've had them overcome some kind of fear or procrastination, and then they've been able to, you know, clearly get that vision, clearly move forward, and then, you know, come into their true self. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's been awesome. So first thing I will say is this idea of overcoming fear or just getting rid of fear altogether, it's not actually possible. So we need to stop making that our aim, right? It is truly the idea of feeling the fear and doing it anyway. It's knowing that the fear is there for a reason. It's there to keep us safe. Our brains are wired for survival, not for uh, happiness, right? Yeah. <laughs> Your brain doesn't give a shit if you're happy. In fact, it doesn't want you to be happy because if you're happy, then you're complacent and you're not looking out for all the dangers around that could kill you right? So your brain doesn't want you to be happy, right? It wants you to be fearful. So we're never going to overcome that fear. It's it, like I said, just changing that benchmark and making, um, making this new world your new normal. So that starts to be your comfort zone. Um, so number one, so I haven't had any clients overcome fear, nor do I, I want them to. <laughs> fear <is good. laughs> so that's fine. But yeah, so one of my clients recently, she she initially came to me. I I do get exposed to a lot of network marketing women or multi-level marketing women who are in these different different organizations. Now, I had never knew anything about these until I started this business. And this one lady came to me and she she wanted to work. So I, I focus a lot on sales and really owning your stuff when it comes to sales. Because sales and money seems to bring up a lot of emotional triggers. 
So yeah. we started by working there. And as we were working through it, as we were, I always say it's like an onion, you know, like we're peeling back the layers to get to the core of like, what is this actually, right? I don't come in and people go, oh, I need help with sales. So I go, well, here, do, you know, this strategy one, two, three, and four, right? Because I know that's not going to create lasting change, right? So let's get to the core of what this is then we can decide on what strategies we can do to really help you move forward. So mm. that's what we started off doing. And what came up again was this idea of like, I don't actually give a shit about what I'm selling. <laughs> right? She was like, <laughs> no. <laughs> you know, and it's, it's so many of them country and go, no, but this company is great. And look, I'm not bagging any company, whatever. Um, you know, it's obviously very successful and it's there for a reason. But a lot of the women I work with, this was almost like the, the network marketing was their gateway drug, right, into yeah. doing business. This was like yeah. just the introduction because they felt safe, like someone was supporting them, um, that they had everything that they need and also that they could hide behind someone else's brand which is yeah. a big one for a lot of them. So this one was no different. And uh, as we were working together, she actually went, again, this, I don't give a shit. And this isn't what I want. This isn't my love. And through that, she uncovered, she's now an incredible energy healer, which seems so opposite from what she was doing. But it was from us reconnecting her. This is actually a, a power that and, and a an ability that she has always had that she took for granted. Her mm. mom has it, her grandma has had it, and she just took it for granted. She was like, isn't that normal? Um, mm. And I said, certainly not. I have no idea what you're talking about. I have <laughs> no spiritual powers at all. So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> me neither. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like I'd, I've got no idea. This is huge, you know, and so wonderful. And you know what's been so interesting as well because she was she was working so hard at the network marketing, right? And she felt like she kept hitting a wall, kept hitting a wall. She was like, "What? What am I doing wrong? What don't I have? What am I missing?" Mm. And I said, once we discovered this, once she uncovered this, I mean, forget Facebook pages and and all this marketing stuff. She just started feeling confident to talk to people about it. And now she, her business has just launched and it's just massive. It's just done so well. And for her, she keeps pinching herself. She's like, this is just effortless. I went, yeah, it's supposed to be, right? Sure, there's business, there's hustle, there's whatever. But mm. it's something that you're passionate about and that you love, especially to get it started, it really does just flow. It really does just flow. So that has been huge for her. So it was That cool. just makes so much sense. That makes so much sense because she was doing something that she was just doing because it was a business, mm -hmm. but it wasn't actually her passion. Mm -hmm. So she didn't have that passion point. And so that connection didn't happen. Yeah. And this is up with challenges and obstacles and That's everything. Cool so amazing that's yeah, amazing yeah. and people can feel that right so when when you're there talking business if it's not truly aligned with you then people can feel that there's a bit of a disconnect people can feel that there's something off right with that's that's what we do as humans, right? We're always looking for consistency. So people can tell that there's something mm. on. So they won't buy from you or they won't, you know, sign up for whatever it is. Not because it's not good or whatever, but because yeah. they're looking at you going, mm, yeah, there's just something not quite right about it. So mm. at that it's such a big one to truly – so people – Again, network marketing, they do a really great job of getting their um, salespeople to truly believe and, and da, 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 and that's great. And some people do. It's Some people, it's fully in alignment, but I would say like a big chunk of them, it's just not quite there. It's not quite in alignment mm. with who they are and what they could potentially do and offer. So it, it doesn't work out, but it's a gateway drug. So it's a starting point. I love that. 
I love that line. It's a gateway drug. Wow. <laughs> I used to work in drug services, so that's why it's like if you say it's a gateway drug, this kills me even more. <laughs> <laughs> has the same effect yep <laughs> yeah <laughs> amazing amazing so tara have you got any freebies or anything for in any of our viewers today yeah or so if any of your ladies are in business in about to launch or want to grow their side hustle then i have starting next monday a free seven day visibility challenge that's happening over in my facebook group passionate mumpreneurs online with tara malel and jump on over there and it's seven days to easily and authentically grow your audience audience and you're following online it's going to really really make a huge difference and the more people we have in the challenge the better your visibility is going to be so that's what i have for your amazing ladies who are watching brilliant that's great and yeah. where where can people find you you did say your um website but just say it again be good .com. so you can go there um, or the best way to interact and engage is again in my facebook group so i am on facebook and instagram at taramalel coaching but yeah the best place is my facebook group passionate mumpreneurs online with tara Malel. brilliant thank you tara it's been amazing it's been really interesting i've really enjoyed talking to you it's given me some insights as well and especially i just love that gateway <laughs> awesome. <gonna> say, <laughs> that is just that is just amazing so thank you for being on with us today oh you're welcome mm -hmm. thanks for having me and guys remember Tara has just explained exactly where you can find her. She's got a free seven day challenge about visibility. And that is just so amazing. Jump on that. Definitely. You know, if you're not, a, 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 you know, able to do it this time, I'm sure she's going to do another one. Just jump in the group so that you get some more information from her there. OK, so, guys, thanks for being on tonight. And. I look forward to seeing you next week when we will have the Change and Growth and Wellness show on again. So see you then.